welcome to Business News. I am Mwesi Igono. A fact-finding process to provide clarity on the issues around forced subsidy removal has been ordered by the Nigerian government since the 2022 budget has no provision beyond June. This decision follows an announcement on Tuesday by Senate President Ahmed Lal that President Buhari did not tell anyone to remove forced subsidy. Briefing correspondence after the Federal Executive Council, chaired by Vice President Yemio Sibanjo, the Minister of Information, Culture, Lai Mohammed, said he will be leading the process to determine the true position on questions around subsidy removal. The Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Zainab Ahmed, had in October 2021 announced that the federal government made provision for petrol subsidy only for the first six months of 2022 as the government looked towards a complete deregulation of the sector. Some financial analysts have called on the Nigerian government to review some of the provisions contained in the 2021 Finance Act in a manner that will attract both local and foreign investors into the Nigerian economy. The analysts noted that the call became imperative given the implications of some of the provisions of the Finance Act on businesses, despite its advantage as a major booster for revenue drive for the federal government. On December 31st, 2021, President Muhammad Buhari signed into law the Finance Bill 2021, few weeks after the said bill was passed by the National Assembly. In the Act, multiple amendments was done, including the review of income tax, increase in the education tax, introduction of exercise duties of 10 naira per liter on non-alcoholic, carbonated and sweetened beverages, capital gain tax among others. Uh, the provision in section 23.1c, you know, has been amended to exclude uh, educational institution from those that are exempted from tax. Okay, that is critical, uh, but we believe that um, if an institution, educational institution is set up, you know, of a public character, charitable institution of a public character, they are ordinarily still not liable to tax. But of course, with this amendment, it becomes a little bit uh, very dicey. Though the Finance Act, according to the framers, is targeted at helping government generate more funds, there are, however, implications of some of the provisions on businesses, households, and investors. And two things the government should do. Number one, the informal sector is a very, very important sector where that there is no tax in the informal sector. So if the government can bring the informal sector into the scheme of things, it can broaden the tax base from there, number one. And number two, of course, incentivize um, international companies that are investing in infrastructure in the Nigerian economy. To encourage investment and reduce the impact on businesses, financial analysts want government to review downward the SIS duty and education tax payable by Nigerian companies. Nkiru Wokedi, AIT News, Lagos. The Nigerian Exchange Group on Wednesday ended positive as all share index appreciated by 1.73% to close above 45,000 points. FTN Koku consolidated Hallmark Insurance PLC and Regency Alliance Insurance led 17 others on the decline and stable, while Airtel Africa, Cornerstone Insurance and Cotville led the gainers. The most active traders that boosted the market turnover were GT Co, Dongote Cement and First Bank Holdings. In the oil market, West Texas Intermediate and Brent Crude and Bonnie Light appreciated near 2%. And that's it on business news. I am Moisi Igono.